Hi everyone, my name is Hung, I'm from IST Lisbon and I'm working in the group of Professor Antonio Pasqual. So in this presentation, we will talk about observability analysis and some guidelines for motion planning for the range-based navigation and target localization problem. So what is target localization problem? This problem is defined for tracker, for example, uh, an autonomous surface vehicle to find the target state by measuring the range of the target. On the other hand, the range-based navigation problem is defined for a vehicle, or it could be a scuba diver, to find its own state by measuring the range to a beacon that's already placed in a no position. Actually, two problems are equivalent and impose a fundamental questions. That is, for the case of target localization, what has a trajectory that the tracker should perform to make it able to, to localize, a, localize a target or to ensure the observability of the target? In this presentation, first we show how we formulate the problem and solve it with one and two tracker. Then we show some simulation result and we end the presentation with some conclusion. So let's see how we formulate the problem. So consider the tracker moving in 3D with a kinematic model described by equation one that is in charge of localized moving target. For the simplicity in its position, we assume that ocean current is zero. And we consider three cases of target. That is, the target either is fixed or moving with a no velocity vector or a no constant acceleration vector. We assume that the tracker has a sensor to measure the range from the tracker to the target. So the range-based target localization is defined as follows. So consider the nonlinear system consists of the tracker model where the all information of tracker are known. The target model depends on the scenario considered and the range measurement model. The objective is to derive the condition for the tracker motion either on its velocity vector or on its position such that the target state is completely observable. In the other words, the initial target state is uniquely determined from the knowledge of the tracker and the range data. So now we will show some results for when we use one tracker to localize a target. So first, we consider for the case the target is fixed. So we let Q, T0, is a relative vector from the position of the tracker and the position of the target. And after some computation, we obtain a relation in the last equation. So in this relation, we see that Q, T0, is the variable vector that needs to be determined. When CA is the matrix that carry information from the track of motion. Why, why AT is no vector, right? because we know the range and we know the tracker inputs. So YAT is no vector. CAT is the matrix that quantify the information carried by the tracker motion, where QT0 is a variable need to be determined. So with the last equation, we obtain the following result. The result state that the initial target state, in this case, only the position, is uniquely determined if and only if either the function in the sense S1 prime or the function in the sense S2 prime are linear independent on the interval T0 and Tf with some Tf greater than T0. So you see that in the two sets, S1 and S2 prime, the S1 prime defined for, for the tracker input, which is equivalent with the S2 prime is defined for the tracker trajectory or the position. So how to prove this? Actually, the proof is quite simple. So from the equation 9, if we multiply the both sides of this equation with the transpose matrix C8, and we integrate it from T0 to Tf, we obtain the relation in equation 12. And according to a theorem in the book Linear System Theory and Design, we see that the vector QT0 is uniquely determined if and only if the matrix W is non-singular. 
which is equivalent with the columns in the matrix C8 are linear independent on the interval T0 and Tn. So which is equivalent with the function in the sense S1 prime are linear independent on the interval T0 and Tn and equivalent with the function in the sense as to prime a linear on in the interval. And the from the relation between the, the position of the tractor and the position of target in the equation A, and note in that the position of a tractor is no. So if Q T0 is uniquely determined, then the position of target is also uniquely determined. So this conclude the proof. So how we interpret this result? So let's consider an example in 2D case where the tracker is under actuated. So this result implies that the target is observable if the tracker move with non-zero speed and change its head in at least one time in the interval. The target is unobservable if the tracker moves along any straight line. So you can see that the tracker move along a straight line then there exists the target image reflect to the straight line. So with the same range, the tracker cannot distinguish the target's image and its own target. So now we move on for the, the case that the target move with a no constant velocity vector. In literature, it's commonly accepted that to localize a target with a no constant velocity vector, the tracker should maneuver with non-zero acceleration. But this is not always true. We can show by a counter example. So in this example, we suppose that the tracker maneuver in the straight line. Noted that even the tracker maneuver in the, in a straight line, but its acceleration vector can be chosen to be non-zero. So for this case, with the same range to the target, but there is this a virtual target trajectory reflect to the trajectory of the tracker is such that they can measure the same range. So the tracker cannot distinguish the target trajectory and the virtual target trajectory. In the other work, we can say that if the tracker maneuver in this trajectory, the target trajectory is not observable. So how to solve this problem? So we use similar tricks as we showed before. We end up the equation 15, uh, which show the relation between uh, some output and the input of, of uh, the tracker. And you see that the matrix CC contain the information of the tracker motion that embody in, in the vector lambda. So from the rela relation 15, we obtain the following result. And note that this is sufficient condition. But the results state that the initial target state, for this case, include both velocity vector and the position, is uniquely determined if either the function in the set S1 or the function in the set S2 are linear independent on the interval T0 and Tf. So the idea of the proof is if we can show that the vector Zc uniquely determined, then the target stay uniquely determined. So what trajectory, what type of trajectory that the tracker should maneuver to ensure the conditions stay in the result too? So in 2D, we can show that cycloid type trajectory can satisfy this condition. And in 3D, the heli type trajectory can satisfy this condition. We can check this trajectory by checking their ground scan. Because the limit of time for the presentation, we skip the detail for the case the target move with a no constant acceleration vector. But we can show that the cyclotic trajectory and the helitide trajectory mentioned above can ensure observability of the target as well. So now we move on for the case we do to tracker to localize the target. So again, we show for the case the target is fixed. So we use similar trick we have shown before. We end up with the relation between the target position and uh, the vector here, the matrix D, you see that is 
quantify the information when the tractors move, y, y, d is a no vector, right? Because we know the range from the tracker one to target, range from the tracker to the target, and, 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 and so on. From the last equation relation, we have the following result. It states that the initial target state, or in this case, the position of target, is uniquely determined if and only if the columns in the matrix D are linear independent on, on the interval T0 and Tf. The, the proof can be similarly to the previous case, right? What the interpretation, geometrical interpretation from this uh, result, consider an example in, in 2D. So suppose that we fix the target two. So this result implies that the target is unobservable if the tracker one move along a straight line to go to the tracker two. And the target is observable if the trajectory of tracker one is not to go to the position of tracker two. So here we see that if the trajectory of tracker one move to go to the position of tracker two, there will exist an image of target reflect to the trajectory of tracker one, right? So we cannot distinguish the target and the target's image. But remember that for this case, the tracker one doesn't need to turn to change its head as in the case when we use one tracker. So this means that if we use two tracker, the request on the maneuver of the tracker is less demanding. And for the time limitation, we refer the listener to the section 5.2 and section 5.3 in the paper for the case where the targets move with a no constant velocity vector and a no constant acceleration vector. Now we show some simulation. For the case, the target move with a no constant velocity vector. This means that the target move in the straight line. We see that if the tracker also move in the straight line, the, the EKF for in this case doesn't converge to the true trajectory of target, but actually is converged to the image of the target. So for this case, we conclude that the target is not observable. So if the tracker maneuver in the side light trajectory that we characterized before, you see that with the same initialization like in this simulation, in both cases, the EKF converts to the true trajectory of the target. You can see here. So this means that if the tracker maneuver with the side light trajectory, then the target trajectory is observable. So now here is an, another example in 3D when the tracker maneuver in helix type trajectory to localize a no moving target with a no constant velocity vector. So we see here the EKF converts to the trajectory of the target. In conclusion, in this presentation, we provided necessary and sufficient condition for the tracker motion that guarantee the observability of the target motion. From the condition derived, we provide intuitive geometry interpretation of the observability condition that can serve as important guidelines for the tracker motion landing. Thank you very much for your listening. And we refer the, the listener to the full paper if you need any more information. Thank you.